around the curves is a little trickier. You kind of got to look like a murderer the way you hold the knife. Hey guys, I'm back. It's me, Jen. I, I don't know why I just said that, but it is. It, it's me. That's not a lie. And today I'm excited to let you know that we are going to be doing a craft. I say we, but really it's just me. But I always feel like I have to say we because you're here. So for the last 10 or so years, every spring I make a little fairy garden. I might have missed like one or two if I was busy or working or whatever, but the point is I enjoy making fairy gardens. I think they're really pretty. They're a great way to bring the outdoors inside and a great way to let loose your creative I don't know, juices sounds weird, but that's exactly what it is. And um, I bought a whole bunch of stuff to make said fairy garden a while back. I planned on doing this video for you guys, but I've been neglecting my duties of crafting. So um, I'm gonna do it today now because I decided that spring, well, I didn't decide. I mean, spring leaving on its own is nature, but I realized that spring is almost over. In fact, we have exactly two weeks until summer. So I better get on this. Otherwise it's no longer a spring craft. So without further ado, we are gonna switch down to the table and I'll show you all the materials I got. As you can see, uh, there's a little bit of material on the table, but there's actually more off to the sides and such. And I'm gonna show you those in just a second. But as for now, I have an assortment of birdhouses and they range in size from large to small and they have little differences in all of them. Typically I like to grab the ones that look like real houses already because they're so darn cute and it's a good base to start with especially if you don't like getting super creative but the dollar store was all sold out so this is what I'm working with. I also have some decorative moss here and I love using moss because I just break it all up stick it on the glue and let it harden and then it just looks really pretty and easily adds a bit of outdoor flair to your finished product which is awesome if you like the look of wood and sticks and you don't prefer to sit down and glue a million tiny rocks. I've also picked up a few random extras that are fake foliage. So I have these green berry picks, some green and blue flowers, some pink and coral, a few more of the pink flowers, and some teal. I've also picked up some mushroom clips, a selection of seashells. If you want to have a seashell roof, this would be perfect. Other times I stick to adding a rock roof and I think it ends up looking really pretty. And I've also picked up some pot trolleys. These typically go underneath planters so that you could easily move them and they have little wheels on the bottom. I'll also be using my trusty glue gun, glue sticks, just in case you decide you don't want your fairy garden to be an indoor decoration. I would definitely recommend skipping any of the things that could get damaged by weather. I would suggest using E6000 or a cement that can dry pretty quickly. I'll also be using scissors, pliers, tweezers, and a Dremel tool. But if you don't have one, that's okay too. In the past, I would just draw the shape that I want and then take a serrated knife that I kept specifically for crafting and then slowly saw away at the lines you created, grab your pliers and pull off the piece. Actually, now that I said all that, I just decided I might in fact use the old knife method just to show you that you can do it too. And now that I've covered everything that I possibly can at this exact moment, I will begin. But before I start any of that, I'm going to quickly change the angle of the camera because it's not safe to cut with sharp objects when you can't see because there's a camera blocking your face. That's better. Now we can get started. I've gone ahead and drawn out the shape of the door that I'm trying to create here. I'm gonna use that as a starting point where I'll be able to insert my handy dandy pliers to pull out the door. But first I'll be scoring the pencil lines to make it easier and also to prevent the piece of wood from snapping off extra bits that I wasn't counting on. This is definitely harder and more time consuming than if you were to use a Dremel tool, but it is possible. Pick a spot and very carefully sort of tap the top of your knife. And then once you have an area for your knife to fit into, you sort of just follow the score marks around until your door is loose enough to pull out with your pliers. Just use caution with your knife and of course the placement of your fingers. Around the curves is a little trickier. You kind of got to look like a murderer the way you hold the knife. Man, I don't know how old Jen used to do this. This is a terrible knife. It's not even got a good serrated edge. Either that or I dulled it over time by cutting wood with it, which is not its recommended function. And now with our pliers, you remove your door. And I could probably use this once I sand it down and fix it. So I am gonna add it to my rando bucket. I hope you all have a rando bucket while crafting. Now I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the process on this house here, but I'm also gonna take the time to cover up that hole because it doesn't serve a purpose for what I need. All 
All right, now that my second door is out, I'm just gonna go ahead and tidy up as much as I can around the edges of the door frames that I've created using my knife. Basically, you just finish creating the proper curves that you were hoping to have. And once I'm done cleaning up the shape of my door, I'm gonna sand it. Put your knife away safely, and we're ready to sand. Now I'm gonna quickly cover up this hole here so I can start assembling my new house. Hopefully it looks good. It might not, but once again, that's okay. I've split a piece of cardboard to make a nice thin piece of card, and that's what I'm gonna use to cover. And now I'm gonna go ahead and use cardboard to create this lifted area where I could attach this second house. And just like before, if there's any gaps, I will end up filling with cardboard before I start decorating. First things first, I'm going to create an area for this house to rest on so that it doesn't depend on glue alone to keep it up. I'm gonna do that by adding a piece of cardboard to create a small lip. Once again, I am making this up as I go. These rules are not gonna apply for everybody, but I kinda wanna show you what types of things you might encounter and how you can work with them. This is a really weird angle. I'm so sorry. So if this was an outdoor house, I would suggest using pieces of bark or thin driftwood, maybe even wood chippings, which also, by the way, make really great shingles. One time I made a house with so many little additions, it reminded me of Ron Weasley's house. I am gonna have to raise the camera, hold on. There you go. Oh, that's better. More mess, but more that you can see. Now I'm gonna have to add the cardboard down here so that it doesn't tip over. The reason I'm making these garden houses today is one, I really like the idea of having plant life in my house and not killing it. And two, because I really just miss crafting and a lot of you guys have been asking for a craft video. So I thought, why not make one of my favorite things to craft that uses things from around your home and nature? It just seems like the best thing to do considering, I mean, we're stuck at home and chances are, you want something to do, so why not try something you might not have tried already? But you can make these as fancy or as plain as you want. Just make sure you don't burn yourself. This is a really, really good craft, honestly. That's, that's what I'm summing up with. I wouldn't recommend a complete from scratch, cut your own doors type thing if you wanna do it with your kids because it gets super dangerous, but otherwise it can be really, really neat. I'm gonna continue on adding pieces of cardboard till I create what I'm hoping to achieve, which I don't know yet because I'm sort of making it up as I go. And then we'll talk some more. All right, my house is looking pretty fabulous. I might still add to it, I haven't decided yet. I can't think of anything at the moment, but if I do, well, you'll see it happen. What I suggest at this point is if you are gonna be using this inside and you want it to light up, I would go ahead and make a small hole on the back of the house. If you want both to light up, then do both. If you want just one, then just do one. What I like to do is take a tea light, which you could easily turn on and off, and get the ones with the flicker feature because it just makes it more realistic, and I hot glue that to the back back of the houses with the little flame sticking inside the hole that we made. That way it will look like a fairy is actually home. And then you'll cover it up with rocks or sticks or whatever and it will look great. So I am gonna go ahead and add the holes so that when I find my lights later, I'll be able to stick it in and show you what it looks like. Pretending that you've already done that if you want to, you will go ahead and decide how you wanna decorate your house now. All right, I am back and it's day two of building. Today I'm going to spend time decorating my house and hopefully finishing and putting things together. There's absolutely no rules when it comes to decorating your house. As I mentioned before, you could use sticks and rocks that you collect outside, or you could buy decorative clean objects from stores. You can add things that you've made yourself, or add things you have around your home, or that you found while thrifting over the years. In fact, I intend to do just that. A couple of years ago, I made this really cute little workbench, so I'm going to throw that in. I also found this cute little wooden boat that we had bought to give to my gramps, but sadly I didn't get to. So I've decided I'm going to add it to the garden, and my fairy is just going to be a boat enthusiast like he was. And then every time I I look at the garden, I'm just gonna remember him. And I think that's a pretty great thing. Got my hot glue dripping over here off to the side because I accidentally squeezed too much out, which means it is ready and warm. So I'm gonna begin by gluing little rocks to this flat roof on the side of the house. 
All right, this becomes the tricky part for me, but shouldn't be a problem for anyone else. You're gonna sift through the rocks that you've either collected or purchased and find the ones that are the flattest, unless you want a super bumpy roof. But if you're new here and you don't know this, I can't really handle dry things very well. And unfortunately, lotion is not gonna help take away that dry feeling providing moisture to my fingers. So I'm gonna speed this footage up. And once the roof is done, we will resume the things. I have completed this portion of the roof and I did leave space down here so that I could begin working on the side of the next house. And because it's a small space, I've decided I'm gonna go with twigs because you can get them pretty flat. It would look really nice. And I had an abundance of twigs in my backyard. I've broken some sticks, I got some ready. So now I'm just gonna take the sticks that I've broken and start gluing them on. We interrupt this craft for a medical emergency in the sense that even though I'm a grown adult, I still burnt my hand. Always use caution, folks, and pay attention to where the tip of your glue gun is. So I will be right back after a quick wash, a bit of polysporin, and a band-aid. And now, back to the house. This area is a little trickier to get in, and I was trying to be cautious so that I don't burn myself, so I got my tweezers. But ironically enough, I burned myself before I even got to the house. Yay. Do as I say, not as I do. Be careful. A few twigs and burns later and the second house, or at least the sides of the second house, are done. Now I can go ahead and finish this roof and then I'm just gonna add things to finish the outside of the house. I'm sort of just gonna make it up as I go and then I'll just point it out when I've finished. I've decided I'm gonna try to create a thatched look for this roof here, and I'm doing that by covering it in hot glue and pieces of twine. I've just cut a bunch of strands and I'm sticking them on all at once and then giving it a trim once the glue is dry. Here is what my thatched roof is looking like so far. And I'm just gonna add a few sticks to the front to tie the look together. And now I think I'm gonna add a few seashells because one, I bought them thinking maybe I'd use them, and two, I ended up finding the boat. So these just seem perfect now. Here is my house so far. I think it looks pretty great. Before I move on to this house, cause it's gonna take a bit of work and I plan to just kind of fast forward through it and make something up as I go along. I'm going to show you how I fix the inside of the house to make it look pretty. And for that, we're gonna need moss, which is perfect because I'm also gonna be using this moss to finish up the roofs. So let's get ourselves a little bowl and add a little bit of moss. All I'm gonna do is cut this up until it's basically a green powder. Once you're happy with how thin your, what, thin? No. Once you're happy with the size of your moss, it doesn't have to be super fine. You just have to make it smaller than the long strands it comes in. We will add it to the inside, as I mentioned, but first I'm gonna show you how to do the roof. This is not only going to make it look a little bit more natural and add some greenery, but it's also gonna hide the gaps in the rocks as well as the hot glue. With your glue gun and a nice cool setting if you're lucky enough to have one, or very cautious fingers, you're going to stick some hot glue in the spaces between your rocks, take a big thick pinch of your moss to prevent burning and just shove it on. And then tap off the excess and then repeat all over. So I'm gonna continue on finishing up the roof and the front little bits of rock here. And then I'll move on to the inside using the glue like I mentioned earlier.
As you can see, it does look really nice. It has made quite the mess on the table, but the end result is really, really pretty. Don't worry too much about the inside of your house. Chances are nobody's really seeing it, and I usually end up putting a door here anyway. If you want to see another video where we go in depth inside and make a few little knickknacks to hide in there, then just let me know that in the comments. As for me and my mess, I'm just going to continue on in the exact same fashion, and then we can add it to the soil and decorate the outside. There's a light at the end of the tubble. The tubble. The tunnel. The table is relatively cleanish. And the last thing I'm gonna do to this house right now is add some sticks in the front. I was gonna make a door, but at the current moment, I'm too lazy. So let's stick to it. Okay guys, here is my garden so far. Now I'm gonna take some of the little decorations I showed you earlier and accessorize. Because as you can see, I have gone ahead and transplanted my house and some succulents onto soil. Don't ask me anything about this process. Honestly, I, I don't know, I couldn't tell you. I know nothing about plants. The only reason I have these is because my amazing friend sent these over to possibly die at my house. But I'm hoping they don't because succulents are supposed to be very low maintenance. So thank you for those. Hopefully they survive. And now we decorate so that we can finish. My fairy garden is complete. It looks really, really pretty. I'm not sure how well it's gonna show off when you're not in person, if that makes sense. But here it is, and I love it. As you saw, we did combine two small birdhouses to make this multi-level single house. And I added all the faux flowers and plants that I got at the dollar store, as well as some succulents that were gifted to me by my friend. And uh, I don't know what they're called, but this one's pokey and it reminds me of a starfish and I like it. And these ones just feel like fake waxy things. So it gives me hope that I might not kill them because they remind me of plastic. I just gotta remember to care for them once in a while. At the back, even though it might be hard to tell, you can see that I did go ahead and add those tea lights. I'm not certain how well it's gonna show up on camera, but in person, it looks really, really pretty and they flicker and it's like a soft, warm, amber-like glow because I chose an amber-like tea light color and not a bright white. So it sort of just looks like somebody's home. And is it lighting up? I, I don't know if it's lighting up. Yeah, you can't see anything. Darn it! Okay, well, take my word for it. It's absolutely beautiful. Do not let this diminish how cool it is, okay? I'm going to attempt to turn off the lights and maybe we'll be able to see it a little bit better. Hold on, let me put that down and we'll flicker out. Fizzle, fizzle, fizzle. I, I, don't, I don't know how to segue into lights being off, so pretend that was it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video and the fairy garden craft because even though my back hurts and I burnt myself, I did enjoy it and I had a lot of fun making it. And hopefully if these succulents don't die, it will persuade me to try again with even more real greenery next year. So wish me luck and drop all your succulent care tips down in the comments if you want to. Also, last note is that you might not be a super fan of fairy gardens at all. I mean, you don't have to be or more specifically this type, but just know that whatever you make, if you decide to make one, you can tailor it to your own specific needs and whatever your vision is. I just like the overgrown 
Alice in Wonderland type look. And when I found the mushrooms, I was like, done. So that's where I went with it. <laughs> if you know somebody who would enjoy today's video because they like crafting, or you just think that they'd like to watch something come together because everybody likes to see things have a start and an end, then please share this with them. And if you enjoyed it yourself, then please make sure you remember to comment, like, and subscribe. You can let me know down below everything you liked or didn't like, what types of fairy houses you've made in the past, or have you never tried making a fairy garden in your life at all? These are all valid questions, and I'd love to hear your answers to them. But the video has been long enough already, and if I don't end it, you won't know what the questions are in order to go ahead and answer them. So I'm just gonna stop now. Which leads me to, bye! <laughs> I'm just kidding. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!